And hold on, you need a breath there. One bar of do bit, do a bit, do a bit, do a Now that I've sung it for you, I'll have no trouble with it. Here we go, right? Back to the beginning. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Is there a tradition of European youth jazz orchestras? Yes, oh, very much so. We're at the sort of back of the bus as far as getting established with it is concerned. Um, and uh, on the continent, most of the major countries have already got uh, quite a well-developed scene as regards youth orchestras. And uh, I don't know that it's widely known that uh, in France you have a national jazz orchestra just as we've got our SNO, uh, you've got a subsidised national jazz orchestra. I hope we are working towards the same here. <laughs> I found it challenging type of music to play. We got a great thrill out of it, it's very satisfying. I was first of all through a private drum tutor who started me off playing various swing rhythms. Then I went to see Buddy Rich when I was 12 and uh, just so knocked out by him that I just wanted to play that stuff. It was really just at school, we had a choice of three instruments and they were all brass instruments and I thought the trumpet was more my size. <laughs> all about I think that there's a lot more encouragement for young music for, for young people to be interested in jazz just now one of the most significant changes is the new curriculum change for schools which is going to mean that jazz is an examinable subject with it within uh, music what that means is that it's going to have to be taught uh, which is quite a revolution in, in schools. It's going to be very interesting to see how that develops, but it's obviously going to create a much wider interest in jazz. Not so much the present time, but through the last 20 years we have had uh, good finances available, and it, it meant that uh, various music authorities could develop their instrumental program uh, to the degree that was never before possible in this country and that's helped tremendously because you've now got a generation of kids who have come up through a system where they've had a sound education. So we're getting the benefit from this now, I'm delighted to say. Uh, few years we produced a lot of very very good musicians Tommy Smith at the age of 19 saxophone player from Edinburgh there he is in the States playing right now in fact on tour now with the Gary Burton quintet now Gary is one of the leading small groups in the world so long as Scotland can continue to supply these people with work 
which is always a problem for young musicians, uh, then I think we've got a very encouraging scene when these people come back from that touring and, and get stuck into the Scottish jazz scene. Are you at all surprised at how well um, they've all fitted together? This is the first time that they've, they've played together today. Pleased. Surprised. Uh, not really. Because, of course, working in uh, schools over the last 20 odd years, uh, I know they're out there. Jazz, up until recently, hasn't been a young person's music. Would you say that? Would you say that's true? And yeah, I think it's it's uh, basically because um, people have just got round to forming uh, groups like this for young people, uh, and I think it's it's a really a good thing, and I think there should be much more of it. Well, there's no reason why young people shouldn't play jazz. And no, absolutely none. The younger, the better, I think. Mm. has brought many of the great stars to the city. But few come bigger than Benny Carter, who alongside names like Charlie Parker and Johnny Hodges, is renowned for his alto playing. His work as an arranger, composer and band leader further qualifies him as a jazz giant. Benny Carter is the festival's musician in residence, and today he's been rehearsing with a young jazz orchestra who have performed tonight. <laughs> Benny Carter, one of the world's top four alto players, at the age of nearly 80, giving the benefit of his talent to one of the world's youngest jazz bands. The Strathclyde Youth Jazz Orchestra formed just four months ago and couldn't believe their luck in having Benny Carter as guest soloist on their first public appearance. For his part, Benny Carter seemed well pleased with the idea. And during a break for piano tuning, he told me how he'd started playing as a 14-year-old. There was no youth orchestras, not in my neighborhood nor in my school. You know, but uh, I played in clubs and dance halls, the Dima Dance Pal they called them at that time d uh, dance palaces. What do you think about the youngsters actually starting like this? Do you think this is a good idea? It's an excellent idea. I wish that it were, you know, happening all over, and I wish it had been happening when I was a youngster, but I, it's very wonderful. Meanwhile, the band's musical director was finding Carter, the jazz legend, much less daunting than he'd expected. Well, when I heard about it, it was frightening. But having met him, uh, I think I said it earlier today, I, I don't go in for these kind of things, but I would say Benny Carter for president definitely will have no more trouble in the world. Charming, it's not an adequate enough word for him. I'm going to try and think of one before he goes away. <laughs> but there wasn't time left for compliments, only the hard graft of last minute rehearsal. And the Strathclyde Youth Jazz Orchestra make their first appearance tonight at Glasgow's Mitchell Theatre with Benny Carter and Bobby Wishart. 
First, though, this coming Saturday sees the start of the very first International Glasgow Jazz Festival, running through to July 5th. The list of performers includes jazz giants like Chick Corea, Sarah Vaughan and Tommy Smith. Also performing is the festival's musical director, Bobby Wishart. He's with us today. In a moment, Bobby will tell us more about the festival, but first, let's hear him play, accompanied by David Newton on piano. The art of modern technology and a fast pair of running shoes. Bobby wish it's sitting beside me now. Bobby, is it nice to watch yourself playing on television? Um, I think that's good sounding. Well, I think you have performed admirably. And Thank I've been you. watching you for, for a number of years, and I can only expect that the jazz festival must be something you've wished for a long time. Oh, yes. It's been like a pipe dream come true. How did it all come together? I mean, has it been four or five years' work for people like yourself oh. and, and others within the jazz fraternity? Well, the, the, the groundwork for it has probably always been going on here. Um, some people in the past, like George Chisholm and uh, people who are coming up to the festival, fortunately, again, to play next week, uh, like Tommy Whittle, like Duncan Lamont from Greenock, uh, have always been around and there for the roots have been there. But the festival as such seems to have been put together about a year ago. There was a meeting um, in the... Um, Glasgow City Chambers, which uh, drew together the various strands, the SDA were involved, and uh, the Provost was there, Humphrey Littleton was there, and the notion was put together uh, into some kind of concrete form that there should be a Glasgow Jazz Festival Committee formed. Right. As so, musical director, what exactly is your involvement? Uh, my involvement is really with the Youth Jazz Orchestra, which was the brainchild of the the festival committee uh, having managed to get it off the ground, the idea and everything started to take shape uh, for the festival. Somewhere along the way, before I was involved in it obviously, somebody came up with the notion uh, of having uh, an orchestra to go, a Glasgow jazz orchestra to go and fit in with the festival and then it was a case of why don't we make a youth jazz orchestra 
um, and then they uh, advertised for a musical director. Now it's running through to July 5th and I would think some of your great mentors are going to be playing and maybe or maybe not you will be in awe of such people as, as Dizzy Gillespie and obviously young Tommy Smith, he must have given jazz in Scotland a great boost. Yes, I think uh, it's the biggest single boost um, I've seen in my career. Mm. Now the great thing, as well as the jazz festival, you were telling me earlier that already there are plans being made for further jazz festival, and I think Glasgow, in fact, for the very first time, indeed in Scotland, has its own jazz club. Yes. Can you tell me a bit about that, and obviously uh, jazz aficionados that might want to know? Oh yes, first one in the country. It's it's a marvelous uh, project. Uh, the, the chap uh, Joe Gillespie uh, has opened this um, jazz nightclub. Um, Cheapside Street, the bottom of the Daily Record offices in the same street there. Is it um, Ronnie Scott's Mark II? I think it probably is, yes. Hopefully it will become that if it, uh, if it gets half a chance. It seems to be going very well at the moment. Mm. And you're obviously going to be a, a very busy boy. I would have thought that someone like yourself will be playing there quite regularly. Yes, he's, uh, he's, he's got a good formula uh, for uh, covering the week. I think uh, initially avoiding the earlier uh, evenings in the week, the Mondays and Tuesdays, which I think could be mm. tricky uh, for somebody starting when you consider that Ronnie Scott, who's been established, getting on for 30 years now, mm. uh, avoids the Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you're certainly going to have a few late nights. I wish you all the very best with the very first and not the last, I hope, International Glasgow Jazz Festival. Thank you very much. <laughs> A few such ticket problems for Glasgow's second international jazz festival, which has enjoyed two sellout concerts at the Theatre Royal in the past week. The festival continues this weekend when, among others, it will be featuring composer in residence the American Jerry Mulligan, who is appearing with the Strathclyde Youth Jazz Orchestra tonight at the Mitchell Theatre. <laughs> Jerry Mulligan's the best known exponent of the baritone sax as well as being a prolific composer and arranger. He's written a special piece for the festival to be premiered on Sunday called The Flying Scotsman. Jerry Mulligan himself getting up a good head of steam. Hey, this is good. This is from Strathclyde. Youth Orchestra's jazz. Thank <laughs> you. 